What's going on everyone? I am Adam Green from Green Auto Services and in today's video we have a Fiat 500 which unfortunately has failed its MOT. However, it has only failed on one item which is surprising because normally it fails on quite a few other things. In this case it has failed on a rear brake imbalance which basically means the rear brakes are not braking evenly as they should. Now I've already had this in our brake roller tester and actually the near side rear, so the passenger rear brakes, is lacking on efficiency. So what we're going to do, we're going to get the car in the air, the rear drum stripped down and see what's at fault. So stay tuned, let's get straight into it. Okay then, here we are. So this is the offside rear brake drums. So I've taken the wheel off and I've taken off, this is effectively the drum brake itself. You just take it off and it exposes the inner working. So in this case, we have a wheel cylinder, which is your hydraulic uh, cylinder, which pushes outwards on the friction shoes and the friction shoes push up against the inside of the drum. And that's what makes the car stop. So when you have these stripped down, you normally look and, um, at the components and just check them for wear. For example, with the, the uh, hydraulic wheel cylinders, peel back the protective boot. It can be a little bit tricky. Sometimes you have to get a, an object in there just to put it back. And all this is literally checking is to make sure that there's no hydraulic fluid which is leaking through the actual piston seal inside there. That is nice and dry. You may see a little bit of grease in there. That's absolutely normal from factory. But in that case, that is absolutely fine. So I'm gonna just try and peel back this one as well. Again, you can use an object just to pull it back, but be careful because it is a protective boot. And if you split it, it will not prevent dirt and moisture getting in there and it will just seize up. But in this case as well, there is no fluid coming out there whatsoever. So this side is actually fine. And as a little further inspection, you can actually get a blunt object, although I'm using a screwdriver uh, or a flathead, this is uh, a bit blunt. You can just push the piston in just to make sure they're nice and free. And funnily enough, that is actually a little bit tight. So I'm probably gonna recommend that we replace this wheel cylinder, but overall the friction material on the shoes are absolutely fine and everything looks all good. So let me take you around the other side as a good comparison. Okay, and here we go. So this is the near side rear and as you can see, everything is just contaminated. So what this contaminant is, is the hydraulic wheel cylinder, like we were checking on the other side, has actually leaked brake fluid past the inner seals and over a period of time has just leaked out and contaminated everything. So once brake fluid gets on the friction material, that is not gonna grip the drums at all. It's just gonna let it slip, it's gonna slide. And in this case, it's caused a brake imbalance on the rear because this side is not gripping and being as efficient as the opposite side. Now, this is quite a severe case. When it's leaking this badly, um, the brake fluid will just get absorbed into the friction material it's heavily contaminated so to rectify this we need to replace not only the wheel cylinder but we need to replace the shoes as well now the shoes come as a kit it will come with four new shoes so we'll be doing both sides and as we're doing this wheel cylinder as well I'm going to highly recommend that we replace the other wheel cylinder just in case so from here onwards, we're going to take the flange and the wheel bearing off to give us easiest access to the rest of the components. We're going to strip everything down, get everything cleaned up and then replace with brand new parts. So on that note, let's just get cracking.
Okay, then from here onwards, once we've taken the shoes off, we're gonna take the leaking wheel cylinder off. So you'll need to remove uh, the bleed nipple, which is an eight mil spanner or socket. Um, then disconnect the brake line, which you'll need an, a 10 or an 11 mil uh, brake line spanner. Um, and then the two 10 mil uh, bolts, very small bolts that will be holding the actual cylinder in place. Okay, so from here onwards, we've got everything stripped down, um, but still dirty. So from here onwards, I'm gonna be cleaning down uh, this back plate to get all and any kind of brake fluid and contamination and dirt all off here, ready for the new parts to be installed. Now, unfortunately, in this respect, when I was removing the brake line from the back of the wheel cylinder, um, the actual union that is designed to free spin around the brake pipe had actually seized onto it. So as you're turning it, you're actually just twisting the pipe. So sadly, I need to fabricate not one brake pipe for this side, but it also happened on the other side. So I've got to fabricate a new pipe for that as well. So that is the brake pipe. I'm gonna fabricate two new ones for either size and then put everything back together. I won't be showing you how to fabricate the brake pipes. That is for a video on another day. Once I've done that, we'll then get back to the cleaning down and reinstalling the new components. Okay, now off screen, I have already fabricated the pipes for the, uh, for the rear brakes. And uh, because I'm connecting them up to the wheel cylinders, I've already installed the new wheel cylinders. So the next step uh, would be to uh, replace the handbrake shoes or the braking shoes in this case. Um, now this is from the good side. As you see, we've got the two shoes here, which open up and uh, put pressure on the inside of the drum. And these are all just your retaining springs and your adjusters uh, to keep everything all in place. So all you wanna do, it's a bit fiddly, you literally wanna take all these springs apart and just transfer them over to the new shoes. Now, before obviously replacing any components, make sure you uh, marry them up to the old ones to make sure that they are the correct parts. Otherwise you could be uh, having a car on the ramp disabled and then uh, you're not gonna have a good day. But in this case, this is all good. So we are gonna transfer everything over to the new shoes and at the same time, making sure everything is nice and clean. Okay, so with a fair bit of fighting, it is all done. So I've literally just transferred all the springs and the adjuster over accordingly, and it should all sit nice and horizontal and flush with each other. So that is now ready to put back into the vehicle. So I'm gonna put this on the good side, um, and the new uh, wheel cylinder is already in there. So I'm gonna put this back together, and then we'll move on to the side that was originally at fault. Okay, so this is the last side. I've managed to put everything together. Um, all the new springs I've transferred across, given them a good old clean up, and then put them onto the new shoes. So from here onwards, I've already got it hooked into the handbrake cable. It's a bit fiddly to get it in there, but um, bear with it, it will go eventually. Um, so now we're just gonna literally um, get the rest of them all uh, hooked up to the rest of the backing plate. Okay, so now that we've got everything all back together, shoes in, new cylinders, in this case, new brake pipes and the wheel bearing and hub, we now need to adjust everything up. So as the brake drum sits over the outside of these shoes, we actually need to adjust it up just so it touches the inside of the drum. Now, in this case, to do this, if you follow the end of my um, flat blade 
screwdriver here, there is actually an adjuster just on the end of it. Now what actually happens is, what you need to do here, is you need to rotate it away from you and then it will allow a threaded pinion just to start slowly coming out and open up the shoe naturally. And then you just keep going until um, you can slide the drum on, but there'd just be a little bit of resistance. It's a little bit fiddly, but um, like I normally do, I just use a flared screwdriver and then just very, very gently tap the end of it and it will easily go around. Once everything is back together and the shoes are adjusted up, all I need to do now is just bleed out the air uh, that's in the new cylinders. So I've already had the pressure bleeder uh, hooked up uh, to the airline and it hooked up to the brake reservoir. So all I need to do now is open up the bleed little and let all the air come through. Okay, so I've bled out the near side rear brakes. Um, off camera, I also did the opposite side on the off side rear. They all bled out, um, all the air came out and I had a continuous stream of new golden brake fluid, which is absolutely excellent. Um, from there onwards, I put the, uh, I went back, sorry, I went back into the vehicle. I put the handbrake on and off a few times. I pumped the brake pedal to get the cylinders and the shoes moving. I went back to the drums on the rear and uh, just made sure that they're still spinning freely but slightly starting to catch on the shoes, which is what you want. Um, as long as everything is all holding, everything's all in place, then that is a job done. So from here onwards, I'm gonna be getting the wheels back on and the rear wheels back in the rollers to make sure that we now have even braking across the rear axles. So, let's get the wheels on. There we go, what a result. As you can see by the brake roller test that you've just viewed, as soon as you put the foot on the pedal, you can see both the left and the right rear brake efficiency is coming up nicely together and releasing nice and evenly as well. So that is a fix. And on that note, we are done for the day. I'm now gonna get this car back to the customer and they can go and get it uh, retested and then get a pass on it. So on that note, if you've liked what you've enjoyed, even learned a little something, then please, by all means, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. I would really appreciate all your support and it will also encourage me to bring more and more videos down the line, of which there will be plenty, of course. So keep an eye out. On that note, I am Adam Green from Green Auto Services. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.